Kieran, can you just explain to us what the issue is about an Irish Language Act? What would be in it and what difference it would make? Well, in 2006, in the International St Andrews Agreement, both the British and Irish government committed to introducing an Irish Language Act, essentially affording Irish-speaking citizens here the same rights that are afforded to speakers of Welsh in Wales, for instance. Um, since then, in spite of 10 years of continuous power sharing, the DUP used their veto and their power to prevent this, at the same time taking a number of regressive measures against the Irish language, um, most recently blocking a LIFA grant scheme which supported disadvantaged young people to go to the Giltac, refusing de development proposals for Irish medium schools. So this brought the issue, and if, the, if you like, compounded the issue of the absence of rights for Irish speakers here, very much to the very core can, of the political crisis here. Can I just ask though, what, in, in, in practical terms, what would the Act have in it that it would legislate, mandate or, 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 or prohibit? I mean, what would it actually do that you can't do now, so to speak? Yeah. OK, well, well the, basic, the basic elements of, of, of the act that we have been calling for, which are based on, on best international practice yeah. in this area, would be things like official status for the language. Currently, the language has no official status. We do not exist in law. We wanted an independent commissioner to remove, if you like, the language from the faxed confrontational party political uh, atmosphere at Robert Stormont. We wanted the provision of services through the medium of Irish and we also want more visibility for the language through signage on our roads and on public buildings. Basic modest measures that are afforded across other regions in the UK and are afforded to Irish speaking citizens in the south but that the DUP have steadfastly refused to allow yeah. here. Yeah. Can I just is there anything you could offer in return? Because it was interesting that Arlene Foster said um, respect for the unionist and British identity has to be in there. It can't be a one-way street. Now, I mean, is there, is there anything, is there any trade to be done there? Clearly they've tried and they've failed, but is, is there anything that you could think of that you might offer that would cost you nothing and that would satisfy her? Well, well, I'm, Evan, I'm not in a position to offer anything. I'm advocating on behalf of the Irish language and the Irish-speaking community here, right. but it's worth, it's worth remembering that the compromise was made, and it was made in the St Andrews Agreement, the very firm yeah. commitment around the Irish Language Act was made already in a compromise deal in 2006. What we need is implementation of that deal. What we need is citizens here to be afforded rights, and the DUP often refer to this very strongly as part of the UK, and that we're very much in tune with the rest of the UK. However, when it comes to rights for Indigenous speakers of the language here, there is a marked difference between how we're treated and how speakers of yeah. Welsh are treated in Wales. And that can't continue. And there will not be another executive or another assembly here that facilitates the discrimination of Irish speakers. I'm Large swathes of society here, Evan, are used, have you looked at the, the case of rights for Irish speakers as a litmus test to see just how sincere okay. and how serious the DUP are about building a shared future and the field that today. Karen, thank you, th thank you very much indeed. Well, let's talk now uh, to the uh, DUP, Gregory Campbell, who is uh, DUP MP for East London, a member of the uh, Northern Ireland Affairs Select Committee. Very good evening to you. Good um, evening. Well, what has... Is he right when he says it is an agreed principle that there will be an Irish Language Act? It was there in the St Andrews Agreement 2006, and it hasn't happened. No, well, what happened was the, uh, the government, uh, the UK government, uh, uh, as part of a side deal with Sinn Féin, agreed that there should be one, but it would be a matter for the devolved institution to establish how that might how that mm. might work but what has happened in the intervening 10 or 12 years and this is where the the previous speaker i'm afraid uh, apart from outlining a very prejudiced view was totally inaccurate not only is that the irish language not disadvantaged uh, millions tens of millions of resources are lavished on the irish language uh, in fact mm. if you look at the whole series of minority languages in northern ireland you, more money is put into the promotion of irish than is put into all the other minority languages put together. Right. There are well, Irish I, language schools open a plenty. There are I'll tell you what, I don't want to get Irish into the language. argument. I'm so sorry, I'm going to interrupt. I don't want to get into the argument about it. I, was it agreed there would be an Irish language act? Did, it seems like the British government did agree to that. So now the British government is very likely to take direct control. You will presumably have no objection to the British government meeting its international obligation to give them an Irish language act, right? Well, no. Well, you see, what we need to do is look at this in terms of an agreement to get political consensus. But hang now, on, I thought, we, I thought it was done in the St Andrews Agreement. There was no, a provision no, no. for an Anglo, well, a, an Irish Language Act. If, we, if we've no, signed well, it, we it have to deliver it, right? It, it wasn't a, an agreement that we were asked 
to give our consent right. to, right. or for us to agree to, nor for the devolved right. institution okay. to agree but the to. British government has agreed agreed. To it. But the British government has agreed to it. It has an international obligation now to deliver an Irish Language Act. So let me ask you this. Yep. If the British government takes direct rule and imposes an Irish Language Act, what will you do? Will, will, that, will that be a problem for you? Well, of course it would be a problem, because it would further advantage the Irish language over and above where we stand at the moment. Its advantageous position would be increased even considerably more. Right. And the problem, the problem isn't the Irish language, it is the politicisation of that language. For example, no one in Wales or Scotland that uses the Gaelic there uses it as a political weapon to try and detach right. Scotland or Wales from the UK. But that's right. unfortunately what happens so, here. So we would you bring the government down? That. Would you bring the British government the Westminster government down if they, for example, said, by the way, guys, we have signed this provision that we're going to give them an, Ang an Irish language act, we better do it. Would you bring Theresa May's government down? Because obviously you're holding her up at the moment. Well, I, I don't think it would be useful or helpful to bring governments down. What we right. want to try and do is re-establish one that we right. haven't got at the moment, and we don't have any preconditions the way okay. Sinn Féin do towards re-establishing okay. our government. Can but we can only do that if people move forward on a, on a basis of some form of consensus. So we win and Sinn Féin right. win. Unionism wins and nationalism wins. Same -sex English marriage. language speakers win and Irish just, language just another speakers one. win. Same-sex marriage, if the British government says, look, we've taken direct control, everywhere in the UK had same-sex marriage, it even passed in the Northern Irish Assembly, uh, it hasn't happened there, you wouldn't mind uh, and you wouldn't bring the government down, would you, if they said on day one we'll, we'll have a, a same-sex marriage in, in, in Northern Ireland? Well, you see, if, if we went down that route, we would then put forward a series of other proposals that we would ask the government to implement. I don't think it, it is advantageous to talk about if our government in London were to say, we, here's what we plan to do over your heads, we plan to do A, B, C, D and E, uh, and, and thereby offend everybody in the course of but doing sorry, that. sorry, you're well, not running Northern Ireland, you've just stepped away. No one in Northern Ireland is running Northern Ireland. You're suggesting yes. that the British government run Northern Ireland. If the British yes. government are running Northern Ireland, why shouldn't they run it like they run the rest of Britain, which is they give Welsh language uh, provision in Wales and there's same-sex marriage everywhere. Why shouldn't they do that in Northern Ireland if you, if you want well, them to run it? Or well, do you want see, them to run it on your terms, which no, is really no, what seems to be what no, you're no, saying? No, what, no. What, what we want to do is all of those matters, whether they're Irish language, same-sex marriage or other issues, we want to work at trying to resolve them within the context of the Stormont institutions, the devolved institutions. So we're not ruling those things out and saying they can't happen, they won't happen, they'll never happen. We're saying we're, prepared, we're not prepared to jeopardise government here in Northern Ireland on the altar of some sort of precondition, which is we'll only operate government if we get all these things. That that That, that is a recipe for a zero-sum game. And we, we can't do that. We've, we've got to get a government up and running and then work those issues out right. across the divide Great. Gregory trying Campbell. to ensure we reach some sort of accommodation that everyone can live with. Gregory Campbell, thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.